Hey guys, are you wondering what five things you should never list in the activity section of your college application? In this video, I'm going to share some of those with you. My name is Brooke. I've been working with students through the college admissions process for over a decade and a half. During my 2022 season, about 50% of my essay clients who got back to me about where they ended up got into their first choice colleges, many of them top 10 ranked universities. So if you're looking for help and support in this process, definitely check out our website, supertutortv.com slash tutoring. We have me and several other really qualified people to help you through this process. Um, we also have test prep and we've got a digital SAT course coming soon if you're prepping for that. So make sure you plug in. We're also on TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter. Um, cool. Number one, elementary and middle school activities. Do not list those on your college application. They happen already. They are over. They are done. Is it okay if you've been playing piano for 20 years to say I've been playing since I was three? Yes, you can put that in the description. That's fine if you feel like it's warranted. There are some exceptions to this. Like if you won the Junior Olympics when you were in eighth grade or something in tennis, you can write that in the additional information. I feel like that might be legitimate because it's so significant. If something's really, really significant, cool. But if it's just like activities you did in middle school, don't just feel like, oh, I haven't gotten to 10 yet. I'm going to put some eighth grade activities in there. Don't do it. Don't do it. It's weird. Awkward. Okay, thanks. Number two, test prep and tutoring that you received. I don't want to know that you're going to like weekly tutoring because then it undercuts my knowledge of how you've achieved what you've achieved. So I generally say don't list prep, te prep, test prep and tutoring. Are there some exceptions to that? Sure, if you're part of some special scholarship program that includes tutoring or you're in this program where they tutor you and they give you baseball and you're doing this baseball program and tutoring is a part of it, that's fine. Number three, fluffy social media accounts. If you have an Instagram account and you got 10,000, 20,000 followers and it's just like you in a swimsuit or like fashion, colleges don't want to know that and it doesn't really help you get in. Now, if you're using your social media account for good or you have like serious subscribers, you've got like 100,000 subscribers on your YouTube channel where you're helping people learn calculus or something like that, that's pretty impressive and pretty cool. And you're also doing something good for the world. So think about what is in your social media account. Is it just fluff? And how big really are you? Are you an influencer who's built a business? Then maybe you can list that because you're doing deals, you're making money, like whatever it is. Okay, then maybe you can list that. You've got to also think these colleges might look up your account. So if your account makes you look like dodgy and cheesy or gross or whatever it is, you know, you've been warned. Cool. Casual babysitting. And maybe even dog walking, I'll add to this. Like babysitting your neighbor's kid or like walking someone's dog. I once had a kid who built like a very elaborate dog walking business and he had like five dog walkers working for him and stuff. Okay, fine, legit, that's a business, you've built something. But generally, if you're just walking a dog or two or you're just babysitting a couple kids or two, it makes it look like you're grasping for activities. I'd rather see six really strong activities than like dribbling down to like dog walking and babysitting your friends. Now that being said, caring for your siblings or having a family responsibility or caring for like your elderly grandma, totally kosher, totally awesome, I love those. Or if you have a job working for a company, like you work in a preschool, you work for right doggy daycare, it's a little bit more legit. But if, again, if it's just casual babysitting, you're stretching people, you're stretching. Finally, number five is disability or mental health affinity groups, particularly if you haven't disclosed that you have a mental health issue or a disability elsewhere in your application. Like if you have a depression support group that you are maybe not leading, but being a part of or participating in, right? That you just told the school you're depressed. That's kind of awkward, right? If you have ADHD and you're like ADHD awareness, you know, national organization where I meet once a week with like people from all over who have ADHD too, like cool, but just be really careful about listing that stuff, guys, because you don't want to wave a flag in front of people's face, especially if you're not talking about it, especially if you feel like you're not already going big with it and it's not anywhere else in your application and it doesn't need to be on your application, do not offer up information that could help people disqualify you. Okay? Okay, cool, awesome. There's five things. Don't put them in your activities. Glad we talked. And do you have any other ideas of activities that you've thought about putting that maybe you should or shouldn't or you're not sure? Go ahead and ask in the comments and I'll let you know what I think. If you're prepping for the SAT or the ACT, we have courses right now. And if you are taking the paper test and want to upgrade to our digital course when that's available, that's now an option. Um, so sign up and I hope to see you guys next time. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.